everybody. This is Joy Halstead with Soapbox. And this show that we're having is something that's very, very important. It's close to my heart. It's something that I wish we didn't have to discuss anymore, but unfortunately it, it goes on. And the subject is the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, so before I uh, introduce our guest, I want to um, thank our underwriters. And that would be Pieces Pizza by the Slice, including low-fat, vegan, and gluten-free options, as well as a fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for supplying pizza for the crew. 21st Street near Capitol Avenue. Their phone number is 916-441-1949. And also, Humor Times, it bills itself as the world's funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription in print or digital format. Subscriptions info along with cartoons, funny fake news, video and more info can be found at Humor Times. And we'd also love to hear from you on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com soapbox sack. And don't forget that we do have a YouTube channel. It's Soapbox Sacramento. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce our guest tonight. Um, he's come all the way from the Bay Area, and I'm really happy to have him here. Uh, his name is Will Wiltko, and he's with Citizens Trade Campaign. He's one of the lead organizers, and um, I'm really glad that he, he came to talk about what's going on with the Trans-Pacific Partnership at this point in time. And, he can give some explanation about what it is and what's going on with it currently. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Well, thank you for having me on your show. Um, I think this is a really important issue that is, we're currently at a state where it's, it's critical that we act now and that we all are aware of what it is. So basically the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it covers 40% of the world's economy. It was negotiated in secret behind closed doors with hundreds of corporate advisors who basically put all of these things in here that have nothing to do with free trade. It's over 6,000 pages long. Um, one of the key provisions in the Trans-Pacific Partnership is that it grants new rights to multinational corporations to sue the United States government over anything that it think that they think infringes on their profits. So this could go this could be anything from raising the minimum wage to environmental protections. Um, multinational corporations have that ability to sue and they have used it in the past with other trade deals that have put kind of versions of this forth, but nothing has been on this scale yet until now. I've, I've heard of them like actually bankrupting some countries in this manner um, it's yeah it's so a scary thing it is it's it's really something that we need to be concerned about so for instance right now in um, 2016 trans Canada is suing the United States over the fact that it rejected the Keystone XL pipeline and it's suing not just for the I think they said they, they invested $3.1 billion into it. Um, it's suing for $15 billion, which is supposedly accounting for profits that they think will be lost. Their future profits. Yeah, their yeah. future profits, their future expected profits. Right. So whatever that means. Um, and what's scary about the Trans-Pacific Partnership is that you basically have a panel of three corporate lawyers who decide whether or not um, these corporations are allowed to, or their claims are valid. Right. And so there's no way to overturn um, a ruling. This, is it called, is it a tribunal? It's basically a corporate court. I, yeah. I like that, I think that term is. A kangaroo is, court I like to use. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really scary. Um, and the fact of the matter is, like in places like Australia, for instance, they are trying to combat the effects of the tobacco industry in like advertising um, by putting labels on cigarette packets that basically say like cigarettes 
Warning labels. Yeah, warning yeah. labels. And so with something like that, the corporations had the ability to, to sue Australia over that for trying to regulate um, and save lives. So that's, that's something that And that's, they won too, right? Um, I can't answer to that, but yeah. it is something that is... It can happen. It's really troubling. Um, and so you have examples like in Egypt, for instance, you know, there was the Arab Spring and a lot, there's a lot to be desired with the result of the Arab Spring and the continuing results. But one thing that happened in Egypt was the minimum wage got raised. And so there's a French company that's currently suing over the fact that the minimum wage has increased um, and they feel that they, their profits are being infringed upon. Um, and so this, I think, an important point to make is, is that this undermines the very sovereignty of nations. This is one of the worst things to happen to democracy. Absolutely. Uh, ever. So yeah. this, it's a bad deal. Um, That's what scares me is that, you know, our democracy is, it's shrinking as we speak and this could just totally override any type of, you know, democratic process that we would have because once this deal is done, it, there's no going back. That's the other issue. It's yeah, so I think that, that that's something that's, that's really important. And you know, and a lot of people know, that the United States at this stage seems to have been set up to benefit corporations and the 1% over the people and human dignity of the people within the United States. And that's something that is a trend that's happening and has continued to happen. And the Trans-Pacific Partnership not only continues that trend, but it forces those ideas onto other nations. And when I say force, I want to be clear that when you are not the United States, when you're not one of the power players in this deal and you enter into it, there's not a way out of it. Um, once you're in it, you're in it forever. And you have very little say. You can't vote your way out of it. And the United mm -hmm. States, um, is currently in the position to stop this deal. It's on us, right? And it's of critical importance that we. And that's we, why we're we talking it. about it because it just can't happen. It can't happen. Well, it could happen, and, and that's the problem. It, it very well could happen. There's a lame duck session of Congress coming up, and that's where we think that it's most likely to be pushed. And a lame duck session, for uh, folks who don't know, is the period where the elected officials feel the least accountable to the American people because they're, uh, they've either just been elected, this is right after the election, and they've either just been elected or they're on their way out. And so this is when really um, dirty, like awful bills uh, get pushed through. So that's, that's what we're, we're fighting against right now. Yeah, and we just have to make sure we keep spreading the word so people know what this is and what it's about and how horrible it could be. Mm. Um, I think it's just, it's frightening. Um, and I, it, what's scary is there's so many people that still don't know what it is. They've never even heard of it. And it's very distressing that, you know, they've been keeping this under wraps for so long and the mainstream media won't, they barely touch, you know, the subject at all. I mean, it's nuts that you know, these outlets, you know, they, I guess they have a part in it to play too, you know, I think that's part of it, but mm -hmm. we need to, um, we're, we'll just keep trying to um, kill this thing. I mean, that's basically what we're trying to do and in, in inform people. And there's just so many things that are bad about it. And, you know, just like human rights issues alone. Um, the slave labor, children, child labor that some of these countries uh, engage in, and mm. why we're even doing, a bit, you know, getting them to partner up with us, I can't understand that. So there are a lot of reasons why we're trying to do this, and I think the biggest one is this idea um, that's been put on some of the people at the top of the American government that we need to go back to the way things were during the Cold War, and we need to um, enact policies that try to contain um, an aggressive China, but we don't necessarily, those policies aren't necessarily relevant to today's time. Um, 
Not and in the digital age. Well, yeah, there, there's just a lot has happened since the Cold War. Um, and for us to go back to those policies is a mistake. And it's a, it's a fundamental mistake. And for us to sacrifice human dignity, human rights, uh, environmental protections, food safety, um, just to try to get some kind of edge on China is misguided. Absolutely. So, and then just yeah. for the give the corporations that much control mm -hmm. is just, it's, it's um, money over people, you know. Um, it's just not cool that, the, that, that we're handing it over to them. Um, I did want to ask you about, um, we had the Rock Against the TPP show on Friday, which yeah. I unfortunately couldn't go to, but you were able to go. And you were missed. I know. But um, how, how was it for you, and do you think that they, they touched people and that they're going to have these other peop more people learn about it and share? So Rock Against the TPP is this extraordinary road show that's been set up and, and put on by an organization called Fight for the Future. And it's an organization that's very concerned about what will happen after, what will happen um, to freedom of expression in the online world um, yeah, after, if the TPP is enacted. And so it's this great organization, uh, Fight for the Future, that is comprised of artists uh, and activists. And this idea came up um, through one of the leaders of Fight for the Future. Her name is Evan Greer, and she's a folk singer and a very prominent activist who had the idea that other singers and activists and just musicians of all sorts and um, actors could get together and spread awareness about the Trans-Pacific Partnership and how it's this corporate power grab. So she um, amazingly set up this, this series of concerts. And in San Francisco, it really showed how much the word is getting out. We had over a 1,000 people in attendance. And, and there were folks ch chanting to stop the TPP and folks who didn't necessarily come from spheres that had been um, active or engaged with this issue who showed up the next day at the teach-in to learn more about what they could do to to stop the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So it was a really beautiful and, and dynamic event that um, moved a lot of people and, and it's still going this uh, series of stops. It'll be in well, I, I would suggest go to rockagainstthetpp.org because they continue to add, to add events and yeah. get requests to do more events in different places. But I know yeah. it'll be in um, Ontario and in Boston. And so D.C. too. Yeah, yeah. Washington, D.C. But I would check the website for, for more information on that. And if you're in the area, I, I strongly encourage you to go because it's a free concert series right. from some of the best artists um, and activists out there. And... It's really something powerful when people come together uh, over one issue. And this, this issue of the Trans-Pacific Partnership has united people in ways that I've only seen uh, a few times. And you get folks from organizations and uh, spaces like Black Lives Matter, the immigrant rights community, um, unions. Unions are unanimously united against mm -hmm. this awful trade deal because they know what the impact will be on the on folks labor. that they've represented. Yeah. yeah. They they know what it's like to see a family lose their income and go from soup kitchen to soup kitchen. And they know what it's like to see soup kitchens close because there's so many, there's too much demand oh. um, on them. So this is something that's very dear to people in a lot of communities. And it's, um, it's, it's really important. And I feel like, I mean, in my mind, I feel like this is more important than the election even, you know, in some ways, because... It is. This is something <laughs> that will dramatically shift the, the way the world functions. Right. It'll change it from something that... It'll change the international system into something that's just 
there to benefit corporations. So it's profits over people. That's what it's all about, and it's and militarily, I guess, to keep that war machine going. It's just. Um, it's all bad, folks. You need to learn about it and get, you know, get your own information. But um, I was, we actually had um, one of the organizers of uh, Rock the TPP come to um, our area with the blimp. And we went to Ami's, Ami Barra's office with the blimp. And, um, we brought our signs. Uh, we went inside and talked to um, one of his representatives, and we all we all said something to him about what issues we had with Ami Barra being on board with this, hmm. because he, he he has expressed that he will probably vote yes on this if it comes his way, and yeah. we're. We, we're doing everything we can do to try and change his mind. Um, and his, um, the person that he's running against, um, the sheriff, Scott Jones, is actually against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Hmm. Um, so, you know, that was, that was pretty interesting just to, to have the blimp. And then I just uh, was at an event in South Lake Tahoe when Obama came for the environmental um, group, the meeting there for the summit. And um, we had quite a few people show up and I don't, I, we got, we made some noise there. And so I think Obama at least saw some of us with their signs, maybe heard us, but um, you know, it feels good to get out there and express yourselves for something that you feel is so wrong mm -hmm. instead of just feeling you know that you can't do anything because you can you can write you can write letters you can get a hold of your representatives and let them know how you feel about it um, you know you can have actions I know um, flush the tpp.org is a really good organization that gives you everything you need to do um, the citizens trade campaign has stuff on their website um, public citizen there, does as well there's yeah. so much information and so many ways to help anybody that wants to speak out or do something that there's there's all kinds of things there that you can look into but you know our our deal is we just we really need people to be aware of this and realize I mean and learn about it and and find out that it's, there's a lot of bad stuff um, going on that most people don't even know anything about. And so we need to change that because the, the mainstream media is not going to, they're not going to talk too much about it because, as I said, I think they probably have interest in it as well. So there's a lot in there, but uh, I would say that Ami Vera, to, to Ami Vera, um, I want to speak on him a little bit. He's an interesting person. He voted wrong on Fast Track. And Fast Track is basically just pushing the TPP through without any approval and uh, negotiation. Um, and he pro but this is, he voted for it after promising he would oppose it. Um, and he's been slammed by labor. Like, if you mention his name, you'll hear about how much he has burnt his bridges with labor. Yeah. Um, and he seems to be thinking he'll take the same p position and vote for the t uh, TPP in the lame duck session and that people will forget about it. He thinks that people will just forget that he's for it and that he came out against the interests of the American people, his constituents, and all these organizations that are fighting against it. It, it just baffles me that, that he's doing this, that he's taken this position in favor of it. Because when some, some of the representatives that I've met with have come out against the Trans-Pacific Partnership publicly, they have the overwhelming support of a variety of organizations. They have the support from labor, they get support from environmental organizations, they get support from all these grassroots organizers and, and grassroots organizations. And when people come out against it, we have their back. But when they're for it, we don't forget. 
No. And the American people can't afford to forget, and neither can the people of the world. But it's our duty as the country that's really pushing for this to hold our elected officials accountable. Yeah. Um, so it's been really disappointing that, that Ami Berra has been taking the wrong side on this. And I do hope that he does change his mind. And there, there was this uh, statesman like a long, long time ago. His name was uh, Edmund Burke. He was off in uh, England. And, and he wrote about representation. He wrote about how it was the duty of representatives to not necessarily always go with just what their constituents say, but to go with what was for the good of the people. And on this Trans-Pacific Partnership, you have the constituents against it, and it's also against the good of the American people. It's not in the interest of the global population. It's in the interest of the few. It's in the interest of the, as my old boss would say, the one percent mm -hmm. um, who are the only people who benefit from this. And it's something that is absolutely abhorrent and inexcusable to defend and come out in favor of. We need our representatives to be held accountable and to come out against it. So I encourage people to, especially for people like Representative Barrett, to come out and go to any event they have and ask them what their position on the Trans-Pacific Partnership is. And if they say, oh, well, I'm not sure, and say, well, you need to rethink your, you need to come out against it. Um, because if you do, we'll have your back. If you don't, then you'll be remembered. Um, and I mean, you just have to look at Ami Berra as an example. He's toxic as yeah, a candidate. And he's only, you know, one of the only few Democrats that actually voted for fast track too. I, I just, it, it's <laughs> disturbing, but I, I think that there, there's hope because I, I hope that he sees what has happened to the folks who have come out against it and, and the support they've gotten. But it's, it's embarrassing to have someone who claims to represent the people in favor of such a disastrous trade deal, um, especially if, yeah, it's, it's just not good. So I, I encourage people to, to hold uh, their elected officials accountable. And yeah. time is running out. The lame duck session is coming up. So representatives will be in their districts in October, so that, that's an opportune time to, to really target them. But give them phone calls. Don't be afraid to talk to representatives, to talk to the congressional offices. They're not that scary. They're there to serve you. You elected them. Right. So. And they'll take your information, you know, and they do respond. I, I email, I call, I do that all the time, and they do respond. Mm -hmm. um, well, like, some of the representatives that have come out against it, like Leader Pelosi, for example, she sent a letter to her constituents in San Francisco saying that she stands against the Trans-Pacific Partnership in its current form. Now, it is something that is really important to tell your constituents when you do that. Um, but we, we definitely need our representatives to to continue to follow suit. And supposedly Hillary's against it, but we don't really trust that so much. Well, she's against it right now. <laughs> she's against it on the campaign cycle. And I think that the fact that she did listen to what people had to say, and she did listen to the folks from um, her own party and from, from all over the political spectrum, I think it's a testament to how strong the opposition is against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So I do applaud uh, uh, Secretary Clinton for coming out against it, and I strongly hope that she does continue to oppose it um, because it is bad for the, Amer for the American people and for people throughout the world. Um, this, is, this isn't like one of those other trade deals that we had where um, it just affected a few countries, and th right. those were huge devastating impacts, but this is something that will, that is, unprecedented and it in scale. encompasses more things than just the TPP. There's so many different other things, the TTIP, the CETA, all these things all these together. Things are come. They're all gonna connect and then it's it's gonna be bad people. And you're not gonna have the freedom that you used to have. You're not gonna have your 
you know, high-speed internet. Um, you won't know where your food comes from. <laughs> um, they're going to remove the country of origin, um, pretty much. Um, no yeah. more made in America. Well, the thing about food safety, I think that's a really important point because the United States currently rejects a significant portion of food in two minutes <laughs> food imports from uh, TPP countries like Vietnam and Malaysia is unsafe. But the Trans-Pacific Partnership would require us to accept food imports that do not meet U.S. safety standards. Or they could sue us. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> how it works. Um, it means lower wages and fewer jobs. It, it's bad for the climate. Um, and a lot of things that we've been fighting for, you know, raise the wage and all these different things, um, just human rights issues are mm -hmm. going to go by the wayside, all this work that everybody's been trying to do to make life better for everybody. Yeah, so if you want to raise the minimum wage in a country where people get only 65 cents an hour, then, and you try to do that, and you actually manage to do that, uh, then you could get sued right. under the TPP for infringing on the profits of a multinational corporation. This yeah. is straight up evil like it is and yeah, who thought we this world would ever come to this yeah, i find it really well it happens sad. there there are often these kinds of battles that that have happened throughout history and i think there's this kind of progression that's happened in the world where things have gotten better and a lot of that is due to people getting together the people getting together and working to fight against some injustice and i have to say that this level of activism against the Trans-Pacific Partnership is something that is a continuation of the social movements that have worked to make the United States more inclusive, to basically give more rights to, to the people. So I think yeah. this is going to be... We need to keep that trend going. Yeah. Mm. I think that it's important to know that there is a lot of hope as long as you take action. Good. I hope yeah. so. I hope you're right. I hope we win this war. <laughs> I mm -hmm. really do. And we're just about out of time here, but I want to thank you so much for coming and thank doing you for this me. with me. Um, it means a lot. And I guess we're out. <laughs> All right. Don't move. <laughs>